Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Community Works. I'm Bernadette Welsh, your host. Each one of our shows highlights a local nonprofit agency in our community. Our goal is to educate you, our viewers, about the great work that's going on all around us every day by local agencies and their supporters. When people help their neighbors, everybody benefits. The focus of today's show is the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce and the town of North Haven getting together to put on a wonderful event for us all. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome my guest for this evening. I have the Executive Director of the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Ray Andrewson. Welcome. Great to be here, Bernadette. Thanks for having me on. Oh, my pleasure. And we also have Walter Mann, the Executive Director of the Economic Development Commission, and he's also our Station Manager. Uh, Walter, welcome to the show. Thanks. Great to be here. Ah, terrific. Okay, Ray, let's start with you. Let's give our viewers a little bit of the history, the mission of the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce. Sure. Well, uh, the chamber dates back to 1915, uh, dated back as the Wallingford Chamber of Commerce, and separately there was the North Haven Chamber of Commerce, which came along later on. North Haven had its own chamber, Wallingford had its own chamber. In 1989, the two chambers merged into the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce. So we have about 450 members. Our mission, of course, is to create a business environment and a community environment that's healthy to sustain small and even mid-sized and larger scale businesses. So we're business advocates. We're a place that uh, provides opportunities to convene and meet. That's what our September 23rd Expo on the North Haven Green will be all about. Uh, and we have a lot of programs uh, that help business, everything from leads groups, uh, right on up to Small Business Council lunches. Uh, we also do podcasts uh, on our uh, chamber uh, right now. We also have a lot of mission um, that we do to provide uh, access to relationships with our local government leaders, our state lawmakers, which is our public policy end. Uh, we also work on economic development. As you know, there are a lot of manufacturers in the region as well, small retail, restaurants, so on and so forth, healthcare, business, um, insurances, plenty as well. So we do that in our macro events, of which the September 23rd uh, North Haven Festival and Business Expo, the first year we're doing it, uh, is going to be part of our annual events. We're going to learn all about that in a little bit, Ray. Yeah. Could you tell our viewers, maybe they won't realize, sure. is the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce a nonprofit? Yes, it is. And, and you run a beautiful program supporting nonprofits in the community. <laughs> Indeed so, I do. <laughs> so here we go. Here's your, here's your tax form. Write this down. So <laughs> 501c3 versus 501c6. The Chamber is a 501c6 nonprofit because we are an advocacy dues-driven organization. That's how we, with sponsorships, uh, from our larger partners on to individual memberships. That's what sustains the Chamber of Commerce, uh, keeps our programming on behalf of business going. So we are a nonprofit. Uh, no one profits from this. Uh, we're not part of the United States Department of Commerce. Um, okay. That's a correction I'd like to make. And we're not supported by government. We don't get a dime from the federal government. It's all dues and uh, event-driven tickets, sponsorship. That's how we get our revenue as a wonderful, nonprofit. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, okay, Walter, would you explain to our viewers what happens at the Economic Development Commission? Well, sure. We're a town uh, commission that is charged with uh, working in many ways to support uh, economic development, uh, growth in town, to attract new businesses, to uh, maintain our existing uh, businesses. And, you know, we work uh, as, as much as we can with uh, our first selectman, Mike Freedom. Mike is you know, I, I, everyone knows this, but he's really an envy of a lot of other municipalities uh, in, in the amount and success he's had in terms of working, you know, in the economic development area. So we try to help him as much as we can, uh, but, you know, he's, he's our leader, does a great job, and we're here to support him in any way we can. For sure. Yeah. So that you, if a new business comes in, you help Mike to get them in and support them mm -hmm. and make them feel comfortable doing yeah. what they're doing. and. And then Ray here helps advertise where they are, yep. and everybody's happy. Yeah. So that's good. And that's mm -hmm. what makes, I think, North yeah. Haven a wonderful place to live. I know I've been a resident for 40 years, and mm -hmm. I can't say enough great things about town yeah. North Haven. Okay. So, Ray, what exactly does a Chamber of Commerce do for mm -hmm. local business? A lot. 
A uh, lot. <laughs> yes. And I know you alluded to some of that before, yeah. but maybe we could give it a little more detail. Well, I think if you were to think of uh, getting those ribbons cut, we do a lot of ribbon cuttings for new businesses. We've done a lot of them along Washington Avenue and other parts, State mm -hmm. Street uh, in the center of town here. Um, we advocate on behalf of new business. We publicize our new businesses. Uh, we provide meeting space and convening platforms, macro events, for example, uh, to help our businesses. But in North Haven, as we do in Wallingford, um, we're listeners. And, and I'd love to say, this, and, and people around the office and the chamber have heard this and my board of directors, give me your bad news. Give me your bad news. I want to help make good news mm -hmm. because that's the issue of small business or any business growth. It's mm -hmm. problems, challenges, difficulties. Mm -hmm. We're here to help connect you to problem solving. Uh, whether it's the kind of relationships you need, your customer base, your marketing, that's what a Chamber of Commerce does. And you know, for folks that are members of a small business, don't, don't they get to go to groups where they can get more business, like leads groups and things of that yes. nature? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of men and women who work in the small businesses appreciate what the Chamber can do for them to help them grow their sales. Yes, it's a matter of growing uh, revenue and sales for a small business, but it's also a matter of convening and connecting. Um, the one thing that we, we have to remember is that we like to do business with people we know. Um, it's, absolutely. It's, uh, no well, like and trust, right? Absolutely. Now, uh, Amazon is a wonderful distribution facility here in North Haven. We're very happy to have them. <laughs> yeah. But that's one aspect of commerce. You click and drag and you get certain supplies to your doorstep. But there are a lot of people you need to talk to. If I need to get a thing, you know, a a ring finger resize, not my finger, but actually the ring resize, uh, I want to go to a jeweler like uh, Larry Lazaroff at Arnold's Jewelers. Okay, mm. If I want to, um, for example, have you know, a local place that just opened up, the fourth uh, uh, venue is Haven Hot Chicken. Mm. I'm going to use them as an example. We had a, a ribbon cutting with them. Their local business that's starting to grow just like Subway did. Fun fact, Haven Hot Chicken opened their fourth location here on Washington Avenue. Subway, which is an international corporation, had opened their fourth Subway sub shop right here in the same location it's at on Washington Avenue oh, wow. back in 1975. Yeah. It's a so good place to a be, little, isn't it? It's the little, little Washington <laughs> Avenue magic if you want to grow your business. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you so much. That's a great, great mm -hmm. way for us to all understand what Chamber of Commerce yes. is do. Okay, so now here's the main event. We're going to talk about the Business mm -hmm. Expo. I know you're both so excited yeah. about it. It's a festival, it's a business expo. We want everybody to come on September 23rd. We're gonna have on the screen this beautiful um, poster that we're gonna see in a minute. So, Ray, why are you so excited about this business expo? What's it all about? Well, first of all, I'm a North Haven kid. Uh, I grew up here, I was raised in Pine Grove. I live in North Haven, I'm a North Haven resident. Uh, my kids have gone through the North Haven public school system as I have. I am wearing North Haven pride crimson right here. <laughs> the green is, meaningful to me in, in my personal life for a variety of reasons. The North Haven Congregational Church, uh, my uncle had the iconic maple liquor store, uh, I've worked in the town hall, I remember going back to Bowen's Drug Store, you know, my father was a mason in the Corinthian Lodge. There's a lot of history for, for me personally there. But what I see about North Haven and connecting the dots is we need to celebrate North Haven. Absolutely. Uh, we celebrate our, our teams, you know, our championship football teams, you know, the rifle teams, whatever it is in the high schools. We celebrate our kids. We celebrate our, our spaces and places, places like North Haven Television. Uh, we need to celebrate our business. and We need to celebrate each other. So the green seems like an iconic, perfect space where you have these successful summer music series, the music under the stars, to convene everybody here for this business expo, thanks to all of our major sponsors and also Sims Metal Management, which is our presenting sponsor this year. Everything from music to uh, giveaways on the green, raffles. Food. And food. Oh, everybody have lots of food there. <laughs> yep. And we've got everyone from the Corinthian Lodge, J. Rue's, Joe's Ice Cream. Oh, We've got wow. New England Chowder there. So there's going to be food. There's going to be family events there um, from the YMCA. Can the kids come? That's the whole idea. It's all free. This is a free event. I know there are fairs. There are other things going on around the state that weekend and other places. Um, this is a free event. You can come, you can see up to 50 or 60 booths from various types of businesses, nonprofit organizations, North Haven Civic Associations, our town government, for example, everything from the library, the historical society, all will be there. People will know about North Haven. You can see the antique cars. We're gonna have classic cars on the green. We're gonna have North Haven Music, the Music Center with Mark Minotti presenting music acts on the stage. 
Uh, we do have children's activities as well, and there are giveaways. So you can win gift cards by coming in. What we want people to do is we want them to vote for their favorite North Haven business, and we also want the best booth that you see. So you're going to vote for the best booth, but you can't win unless you come to the green. Okay. So and download your form at quincham.com and bring it Oh, okay, there's with a you. form. And okay. they will be populating around the town. And once you download and bring that form to the green that day, you have an opportunity to win uh, airline tickets from Avello. Ooh. Or you can win a gas griddle, a Weber gas griddle from Arts Appliance. Cool. Uh, you also, the first 200 people who come at 11 o'clock on the 23rd of September to the green will get a personally engraved uh, titanium, really nice high-end water uh, cylinder. Uh, right. Which is which is not one of these little plastic things that yeah, crack. Yeah, I gotcha. It's, it's, so we're we're doing a lot of giveaways. We want families to come. We want other businesses to come. And Walter, what do you have to say about this event? Well, I mean, you, I've, what would you, you know, like to add? I share the same pride Ray does. I've I've been here uh, well, fifty nine years now in North Haven wow. all my life, and uh, you know, so obviously I have a great sense of pride in in North Haven and. Uh, and yes, we have the North Haven Fair, and that's a great thing. But you know, a lot of other towns in the area have fall festivals and, and or spring festivals, what have you. And so this has been a long time coming, and I think it's a uh, you know we're thrilled with what the chamber has done and, and the efforts that they've really expended to get this. It's it's not an easy thing to do. You know, it's a lot of work, and uh, I'm sure it's going to grow over the years. But uh, we're thrilled uh, at, at the, the whole idea and the premise of the event, and we think it's going to be a a great event that offer a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Yeah, I'm excited too. It's really, I'm really, really very impressed. Um, yeah. Thank you both very much. Okay, so we talked about what will happen. So will people be able to go around and kind of know where the booths are mm -hmm. when they come? And um, everybody's invited, yes. So Ray, mm -hmm. how is it going to be set up? Well, if you've been to the Music Under the Stars events or yes. if you've been to some event on the green, um, we will have obviously our North Haven finest who are out there directing traffic and making sure that you get there safely. Mm -hmm. good, so we good. get up to 1,500 people on the green for a concert. Uh, that's a very yeah. considerable number. Um, so I don't think we're going to have 1,500 people descending on the green all at once. You have right. five hours. You don't have to show yeah. up at 11 o'clock. Right. Uh, we will have music acts and we'll announce those and we will have food on you know, a select location on the tent. But this is rain or shine. So since we have an enormous tents, we're An going forward if we have foot tent. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Absolutely, we might even cover town hall with it. I mean, that's how big <laughs> it is. Uh, and we have the big sign out as you you know enter into the town yeah. hall promoting this event. Uh, but you can park. Obviously, there's a the municipal lot. There's the area uh, over by the soccer fields near sure. Ludals. There's also near the Walter Gorrich Pool and the recreation center, and around the green. Sure. So. How you park for our concerts, where we draw 800 to 1,500 people, is the same thing you would do between right. 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. Uh, during the event. Mm -hmm. So we want people to feel safe. We want them to park. We want them to get to the green, walk around. And again, I can't emphasize, emphasize this enough. Mm -hmm. It's a free event. Yeah. Well, there's, no, yeah. there's no cover charge. But if you want to win something, you have to download the form, vote for your favorite North Haven business, mm -hmm. okay? okay? And you have to be there to walk around and vote for your favorite booth. Absolutely. And then we'll have a location mm -hmm. where you can submit and we'll be drawing these raffles for cards and gifts um, throughout the day. Wonderful, that, that gives a great overview mm -hmm. of it. Thank mm -hmm. you very much, very much. Okay, so we were talking before the show, Ray, about this idea of civic engagement, mm -hmm. of what that means for a town like North Haven. Walter, Ray, could you expand on this concept mm -hmm. of civic engagement? Well, you want to go first? Or? Well, you're the economic uh, <laughs> well, development yeah, chair, yeah, so yeah, I think yeah. there, we'll start yeah. with economic development, right? Well, you know, I, years ago we, we had a, a, an event in North Haven called Show and Sell, and we had businesses and nonprofits involved, and, and there were, you know, kids-centered uh, portions of that event. And I think, uh, you know, this event is similar but, but different and bigger in nature, I think. And, uh, but I think getting everyone out to participate in an event like this uh, that's free. That they can come and go as as they please in terms of times, and and uh, it just really gives I think towns uh, people a chance to to celebrate their community and you know wear their uh, their maroon and white and and uh, show that you know like other towns that we have that similar pride in in this town and that we can also have events that 
that demonstrate that. So. And there are going to be craft yeah. people there too. Yes. Yeah. So that's part of civic engagement, right? Wouldn't you say? Yeah. I mean, there's an opportunity. That there will be crafters. So uh, as you see at other fairs and other community events, mm -hmm. um, and and it's a softer business showcase and business show and sell. Mm -hmm. So the idea is this, we want people to stroll by. We want them to see the various 53, I think we have 53 at last count, it's growing, mm -hmm. booths that have, have committed to this event. Um, so we want people to be proud of the North Haven businesses, mm -hmm. but to support them. But we want them to take their time, go place to place, go to the insurance companies, mm -hmm. go to the banks, um, you know, we, we have a variety of vendors there. Go see some of the specialty um, retailers. Maybe go to some of the wellness centers that are going to be there and signed up too. Manufacturers, yeah. look for, you know, they, they, they looking for a job. Um, so the idea of this is you get a flavor of North Haven. You get a sense of what we have within our borders. Yeah. And external, because we also have other vendors who are going to be there from other communities. Yeah. Um, for example, the Wallingford has its own festival. I'll even plug their festival on this show, and that's from October 7th and 8th, and that's Celebrate Downtown Wallingford. It's a celebration of the downtown center street. Yeah. They're coming here, we go there. Uh, because yeah, sure, you why don't, not? Well, you don't need a passport <laughs> to, to go sure. from Wallingford to North and Haven, course, North Haven to Wallingford on Route the 5. The Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce is North Haven and Wallingford. There's so no TSA is. line out of Wartonbrook Park. <laughs> mm. So you can go anywhere and spend your money. And we should be we mm. should be in different towns. We, we should. should be in Wallingford yeah. or Guilford coming to North Haven. We should be in North Haven going to New Haven, West Haven, wherever we want to spend mm. our dollars. But what we want to emphasize is this is North Haven. This is our North Haven Pride event. And I, I think it, it also gives people that attend this event uh, a chance to discover things uh, that they may not know. I think there are a lot of businesses and, and uh, nonprofits in this town that people aren't all aware of. And so sure. I think they'll discover things that they don't know, businesses that maybe they don't know exist or nonprofits that they don't know. So I think it's also a, a discovery uh, thing in a way for, for residents. I think that's a great yeah. way to put it, yeah. Walter. I, I, people need to know all the wonderful things we have right. here in North Haven. Mm. Yeah. Super duper. Okay. So um, I think we've already talked about this. The business community is going to be here. The civic organizations are going to be there. And we want to combine them so everybody knows this is all part of North Haven. So I think we covered that. Um, Ray, you've noticed, and I think, Walter, you probably have too, that due to COVID and even before COVID, this whole idea of community connections has been affected. Yeah. Right? Everybody's going on the internet. They're kind of afraid maybe to be in large groups of people, and now we're getting out of that. So how is this event? I think it's going to be perfect for this, but could you gentlemen talk about that? Yes. Well, I, I'll jump in if I can, Walter, because I, I, I feel very passionately about this. And I wrote a column in, in, in our monthly newsletter for the Chamber, is that um, you want to know the people that you're doing business with, but you want to see people who are your friends. You want to make friends. You want to have an extended network of friends beyond your own family or your own loved ones or yeah. people that are near you. And I always said this, Ron, Ron, of Ron's Barbershop right near the green, uh, Ron, God bless him, Ron D'Amico has been cutting hair for, uh, since Forever. Eisenhower was Forever. in office. He cut my hair when I was a little two or three year old. <laughs> and the reason I say I went to Ron, he said, well, Ray, Ronnie, you keep coming here. And I said, you know, Ron, if you're going to hold a razor or a sharp instrument near my head, I want to know and trust you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and it, it's really that level of trust. It's like if you're in a community and you see people and you care about them, you're going to trust them. Mm. So, if you have a service, insurance, it could be banking, it could be haircutting, it could be somebody who sells, you know, produce to you. Whatever the service happens to be, if you have that level of engagement in a community, you're mm. going to feel more satisfied in that community. What you can't rely on necessarily is an external community which is impersonal. People right. don't know you. So that's For what sure. a local chamber does is try to tie people in with this sense of doing business with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and getting over this whole isolation that COVID yeah. has kind of did to us and now yeah. we're getting out of that mm -hmm. and I think that's what you were speaking to. Wouldn't you agree, Walter? Yeah, it, it, I mean, there's no doubt it's a changed world. A lot of things have changed, you know, due to the pandemic. but. Uh, uh, you know, I agree with you. It's it's um, and you know there certainly could be future pandemics, but I think that uh, you know it it certainly is time has been time and it is time 
uh, to get out and to uh, experience life. And you know, you only live once, and events like this are great because you you learn more about your hometown and and uh, meet people uh, from your hometown and and uh, celebrate it. And um, you know, I think it's perfect timing for something like this. It is perfect. Yeah. It is the perfect time. Okay, now we were also talking before the show and for a while now about the plans to have a new band shell put up on the town mm. green. So, Mr. Economic Development person, mm. Mr. Walter, what's going to happen with that? Well, what I know is that obviously uh, we've had the showmobile for many years and that uh, certainly fulfills the, the purpose that it has, not only at concerts but at parades and, and different things like that. Um, but I think, you know, with the success of the concerts and the fact that actually this year they've added more concerts, that actually the, the window of concerts has expanded, yeah. you know, beyond what it originally was. And so it showed the success of, of the events. And I think, uh, you know, the town investing in something that obviously is needed, um, you know, um, is important. And it, it, the success of the event demonstrated the need for something like this to be done. And uh, so it's something that, you know, we're really looking forward to. Great. And Ray, I think there's even going to be a schematic at the expo so that people can kind of sort of see what the band shell is going to look like yeah. or will they get to get a feeling about it? Well, it's, we're going to have music right there where it normally has been, which has been in, historically in the trailer over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. That's been fixed to the green during the summertime. Um, the idea is to put something up um, and, and, or have someone there who can answer questions about it. Uh, but it's exciting. Yeah. You know, we do have it coming up. Um, it, it, it has to be you know, you have to lay the, the base and the foundation for yeah, it. You have yeah. to, it's going to be permanent. Right, and then yeah. it's up there for good. So think of it as like the gazebo is iconic. The yes. band shell will now become iconic on the, right. on the green as well. And our, our youngsters can do their end-of-the-year concert there, there and we can have wonderful venues come, music yeah. venues come. It'll be great. Christmas tree lighting, that normally that happens on the gazebo. I'm not sure if they're going to move that center or point of presence over there, but it would make sense, you know. It certainly would. Yeah. It yeah. certainly would, and it'd be it'll be exciting. It'll be yeah. exciting. Yeah. Oh, great! So some, another great thing people yeah. of North Haven can look forward yes. to, yes. and that's swell. Okay, so now, Walter and Ray, talk to me a little bit about your feelings about the future, the economic future, the business future for North Haven. What could we attract? What, what do you think the future might look like for us? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Ray. Well, uh, well we're going Walter, alphabetical yeah, order yeah, this yeah, time, yeah, right? Sure. Yeah, that really is a, it really is yeah. a Walter Crest. Yeah, it is a Walter Crest. I guess I'll, I'll just throw it quickly. But I, I'm, I'm bullish on North Haven uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, I think we underestimate the impact of Quinnipiac University and their yep. graduate campus, which is in the north end right. of town off Bassett Road. That has had a huge impact. Um, you know, in, in fact, as we're we're having this recording today, I just toured over at the Hamden campus, their new engineering department down there, and all the the mm -hmm. incredible laser equipment and the other. Uh, uh, that facility is just beautiful. We have a very good school here in North Haven, yeah. the Quinnipiac University. We have solid schools. We have a very good tax base. We have a really good foundation mm -hmm. um, that's been laid here. Economic development is strong. We see that Washington Avenue, the development, is moving along. Universal Drive has been very busy and active over time. And we also see this interest in what I call sort of niche businesses finally moving in, like 12% Brew, Golf Cove, mm -hmm. some leisure and recreation. And that improves our optics a little bit. So North Haven um, is, is historically been a bedroom community. I think what's going to help us, though, is if we really do have a very strong uh, foundation to address affordable housing so people and young families and young people can move into North Haven. Um, secondly, I think North Haven's future will work better if we diversify some of our, our entities. So have restaurant diversity, for example, recreational and entertainment diversity mm -hmm. um, in, in the community. People want to recreate. They want facilities. They want pickleball courts. Yeah, they um, want to do they, things here in North Haven. They want to hike. Yeah. So if we, can, we, if we can make it a full town, and see some of our assets that are underutilized, like the Quinnipiac River, for example, for kayaking and, mm -hmm. and, and things that we go to other towns for, right. I think North Haven's future is very, very bright. And what would you add to that, Walter? Well, you know, I think, uh, I, don't, I don't think, I know that um, North Haven really is, um, is a municipality looked at by other municipalities, even during COVID, 
you know, Mike Frieda did a great job at, at continuing that, uh, you know, uh, push on economic development uh, during a tough time for, for sure. this country. And yet we saw progress and a lot of our, you know, major areas are filled out, Universal Drive and, and the former Pratt Whitney site. And, but there's a lot of, you know, uh, little areas, you know, we see the Parisi property opposite the fairgrounds that's been vacant for years. That's now going to be a, a Forbes Fuel uh, convenience store and, and a, you know, very nice development there. And so we're starting to see these little areas that, you know, that need that attention, that growth, that that's starting to happen. And, you know, Mike has and continues to do a great job with that. And, uh, you know, to Ray's point about Quinnipiac, I, I don't think that we would have seen, um, you know, uh, uh, developments like the, the Archway housing complex up here on Washington Avenue, right. higher end apartments. Mm -hmm. I don't think that would have been um, maybe yep. having the support it needed to exist if it wasn't for Quinnipiac. And so, Absolutely. you know, I, I agree. This town has a has a great future economic development wise. It's been strong over the years, and, and there's more room, you know, to develop that. I think I think that's very true. I think that's really quite true. Okay, so. Okay, we're going to look at the website now and talk about the website. Sure. So we're going to see a little skim. Uh, uh, there we go. Ray, what will people find on the Quinnipiac website in one minute or less? In one minute or less. <laughs> well, I'll tell you exactly in one minute or, or maybe less. maybe two. I'll uh, give you two. So Quincham, Quinnipiac Chamber, quincham.com. And certainly you can call Maribel Carrion, our operations manager, or myself as executive director. Uh, Ray Andrews at 269-9891. Our membership uh, services, of course, is related to Greater New Haven Chamber and the Quinnipiac Chamber. We're affiliated with the Greater New Haven Chamber, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, but Gary Carliglio is our, our point person. If you'd like to join, learn about membership, solopreneurs, individual businesses, large-scale businesses, and also our major events, of which I can name all of them, but I can't do it in 60 seconds. I'm sorry. So <laughs> go to that website, and you can also find our podcasts, download those, and, and listen. Um, and also more information, uh, and, and that's going to be on our expo. You can learn more about it online. And you get that form is going to be on that. On we'll be posting that very shortly. At, uh, we're watching this program. It'll be on there. Okay, good. Because we, we want people to say, wait, I went and I couldn't find the form. It's going to be, be able, on there. Yeah, and you'll be able to find it in individual businesses. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so for you, Walter, a little final wrap-up question. Mm. Will the NHTV be at the Expo on the 23rd of September? And yeah. what do we do? What well, are we, the station going to do? We've always felt here at NHTV that you know, part of our responsibility, and there are many, but part of it is to kind of document um, things that happen in the community. Um, and it, this is certainly an important event. So, you know, we'll be out capturing different portions, interviews, and and the whole spirit of the event and, you know, to give people maybe that couldn't attend, whether they were away or what have you, a chance to see what, you know, what happened. And um, so we'll be out there. And I'd also like to say on behalf of the town, you know, we're thrilled with um, our partnership with the chamber. They, they always do a great job. They're, they're really a, a, an involved, active entity. And, uh, you know, we love working with them and, and we really look forward to this. And, and, I, and I'm going to put you on the spot, but hopefully future uh, fall festivals. So. Well, the idea is this yeah. is year one. Okay, so we're starting what I would call a North Haven tradition. Yeah. Okay, I like that. Yeah. Well, my director says we've got, we don't have very much time left. So I just want to thank everybody for watching the show. Uh, North Haven is a wonderful place to work, a wonderful place to live, great place to educate your children and to have fun and feel safe. We have a really fine community here. So come to the Expo on September 23rd. Uh, meet all of our business people. Have some fun, eat some food, and just, just enjoy our great town. So thank you for watching. I'm Bernadette Welsh, your host. Thank you to Ray and Walter for being my guests, and we'll see you again real soon. And remember, when people help their neighbors, everybody benefits. See ya.